What's up, gang? Today I'm going to show you what I've found to be the most effective and quickest way possible to decant those troublesome and annoying Citadel paint pots into dropper bottles. In fact, I've gotten it down to two minutes flat and I end up with more paint. So let's get into it. Let's talk about some of the tools we're going to need. All right, here it is. Everything you're going to need. Some junky nippers, something to cut the gates off of the citadel pot here of course your citadel pot new or open doesn't matter some sort of dropper bottle system some agitator beads a medium of choice not water not flow improver i'll get into that later this is an airbrush medium it's a semi matte medium i'll get into it a little later here we'll need a junky brush some sort of razor knife, hobby knife, exacto knife, a little tiny funnel, and then of course the piece that makes all of this happen, this awesome Badger Airbrush Company mixer. It's a little power mixer. I don't know if you guys can see that little edge there, head thing spinning around. This thing makes all of it happen. Trust me. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. All right, let's talk medium here real quick. I like to use airbrush medium because it's quite literally what paint pigment is suspended in. I hate using water. Water will break your paint. You leave it sitting over time and the paint will turn to shit. It's just not good. Flow improver, we're not making a wash, so why would you want your paint to flow? I don't understand why people keep decanting their paint with Flow Improver. This stuff is pretty fluid as it is, but it's a medium. Flow Improver is not a medium. It's very thin. It's very matte. I'm going to pour some out here on the cap. You're going to see it, it's very fluid, but it's not sticky. It's not gooey. It's not thick. It's just a very good skim milk consistency. It's important to use a medium to decant your paints. I like this stuff because it's very liquidy and it doesn't destroy your paint's ability to stay together it won't break your paint of course we're going to need some sort of dropper bottles these are 30 milliliter you get these really skinny tips in them i prefer those little skinny tips versus the fat blunt nosed ones you also get two of these little funnels in there that'll help with transferring the paints these things are dirt cheap you get 30 of them on amazon for 9.99 i'll put a link down below for them it's sim simply enough, you know, I've used these cheap ones from Amazon with this blunt nose on them. Those caps actually end up bursting and cracking open and compromising your paints. This blunt nozzle, it's trash. I mean, look at the mess it made in the cap there. I much prefer these bottles. I actually go with 30 mil just because that's what they had at the time. 20 mil is perfectly fine. These fine little nozzles help you control a very small amount of paint. If you just want a little itty bitty dab on your palette, it's perfect. Compared to these blunt nose droppers where I feel like you're dumping out half the bottle with these. Plus the tips also split on those. They're just overall cheap. I don't care for them. These caps are really durable. They've actually got a child safety lock on them, much like a medicine bottle. These little white ones, they, they crack, they break, they're terrible. So like I said, Amazon, 10 bucks, 30 of them, dirt cheap. Of course, we're going to need an agitator. I don't care what anybody says, don't use metal. Glass beads are where it's at. I don't. Every time I've used metal, whether it's stainless, whatever, they've always destroyed my paints. You get these from Monument, aka Creature Caster. They're buck 75 for 50, 5, mil, five millimeter. Uh, glass beads so get yourself some of these I'll put a link again down below and of course the piece that will make this all happen this is the uh, badger number 121 that's just the stock number paint mixer they're 16 bucks on Amazon I've seen them for even cheaper than that this is what will literally make this happen so fast and so efficiently they've got a little slot back here for two double-a batteries i struggled to put the cap back on i don't know why so we just fast forward through that but this thing is epic it's literally going to do the job for you no more scraping and wasting a ton of time I remember the first time i decanted a pot it took like 15 20 minutes for one pot that was ridiculous 
This is what cuts the time down. I'm going to do this in real time here. This is the first time I've decanted a paint in over a year, so I actually do go kind of over the time, but I have gotten this down to under two minutes per pot, and I still end up with more paint, obviously, because you're adding medium. This is a 12 milliliter bottle. So I'm going to switch this over to grams here, kilograms on there. I'm just going to weigh it out just so you guys can see the difference here. It ends up being 26 grams. So I'm writing it down here, set it up pot, new, unopened, this is completely new, ends up being 26 grams. We're going to do a little idiot math here, scribble, scribble. Then I'm going to go ahead and weigh the empty dropper bottle with the agitators. I know I don't put the label on, but really is the label going to register on a simple kitchen scale? Probably not. So drop a couple in here. I use three because I'm a Nurgle guy, so screw it. I put three. You can put two, you can put 15, you can put however many you want, but I put three. Put the whole thing on there, and of course we jot down, hey, the empty bottle and all of its accoutrement is nine grams, all right? So we're, we're going to do some simple deduction here once we weigh everything out. When I get through with the process, I'll bring the scale back out and we'll do math. I hate math, but we'll do it. So I'm gonna keep the timer on screen here, just so you guys can see in real time. It ends up being a bit over two minutes here, but that's because I kind of stammered a little bit, started showing you guys some things where I shouldn't have. But I, I did over 80 pots, and I ended up getting it down to, I wanna say a minute and 40 something seconds per pot to decant. <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and explain the whole process. I'm just going to kind of let it happen here. It ends up being just over three minutes, which is still, in my opinion, extremely reasonable. Now, like I said, I'll break this down later, step-by-step, -step, more tutorial mode, but I want you guys to see this happen in real time. I put the medium into the pot. I'll give you more specifics later. I'm doing a mixy-mixy here with the magic tool of greatness. It doesn't take long, guys, at all. With the centrifugal force, just make sure that you take it slow as you're pulling the stick out of the pot. Now I'm gonna dump it in here. Excuse my shakes, it was before dinner and I'm hypoglycemic, so I'm gonna be shaking a little bit here, but I assure you I was fine. I'm also trying not to spill it. You can make some kind of little device to hold your pot out of Legos, or you can order a desk wizard from Game Envy put a link down below for those they're great but most of the time here is taking dumping into the pot so you can see the actual work I'm not gonna sit here and dig in this with a dirty brush you know I'm not filling it with a full blast of medium here I'm just putting in enough to get the pigment to get the mass majority of the paint out of the pot here the paint when it's done is going to be perfectly thinned for right out of the bottle use in fact to the point where i only need to thin it one to one with flow improver when i'm using it in my airbrush but it's not so thin that i can't still use it with traditional bristled brush so here i am i've, I've done the second pass i'm just going to kind of clean up the excess here in the funnel and i noticed that there's still a little bit more. Usually it takes me about two fills, you know, the initial fill and then one more fill. And so I'm just checking to see if it's worth actually putting some more some more medium into the pot here. And I decided, yeah, it is. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit more in there. There's no science to this. Just kind of eyeball it. You don't want to get too crazy with it because then you'll end up having really thin paint. That's no bueno. So I'm just going to quickly mix it up. Apparently my camera wants to focus on the back of my top hand and not the actual subject matter. And I dump it into the pot there. And essentially, for the most part, that's it. I'm done. At right at the three minute mark. Um, I got to put the agitators in, obviously. So usually I do that beforehand. But plunk those in there. This, this is all just semantics now. This is 
stupid stuff that could have been done prior. And essentially I'm done decanting this paint in under three minutes. But once I get the top on, boom, three minutes, 23 seconds. So you can see it happens really quick. It's simple. There's next to no waste. I mean, yes, there's residual in the paint pot, but you start with 12 milliliters, you end up with about 17 to 18 milliliters of paint. So you're ending up with more paint. So what you're losing in that, in that pot there is minuscule as far as cost goes. Let's weigh it out here. And it comes up at 31, 30 grams. I think it dances back and forth here a few times. Yeah. I go to grab it and it actually decides to change right as I go to grab it here. Yeah. But we end up going with 30 grams, right? So if you do the math, the empty bottle is 9 grams. The full bottle is 30 grams, as you can see here. Yeah, see, it freaks out on me. It's like, eh, no, I'm 29, but I end up deciding on 30. Now, the empty Citadel pot oddly enough is it says 10 i write down nine i don't know why but the math breaks out to this the citadel pot weighed essentially had 17 grams of paint in it the full dropper bottle ends up having 21 grams of paint in it so you're getting an extra four grams of paint out of this here i am just breaking down the math for it I'm writing down citadel 17 grams of paint and then writing down 30 milliliters, 21 grams of paint. That's for an added four grams of paint, as I mentioned. That's a pretty good breakdown. You're actually gaining more paint here with the medium, of course. So I just want to show you guys, as I said, it's thinned enough to where I can use it straight out of the pot now. Get yourself a duff sticker. It's thinned enough where I can get it straight out of the pot without having to thin it again for brush work but then again in an airbrush it's perfectly thinned for one-to-one -one airbrush paint to flow improver so here i am i'm just going to show you guys it, it looks like i'm mixing around on the palette i'm actually trying to show you guys how how the viscosity of this paint is right now it still acts very much like regular normal paint it's akin to reaper or monument consistency at this thinness which is great because i'm a big monument pro pro fan but its opacity is still perfect as i go ahead and do just a single coat here of this wild rider red onto this junker marine that i have sitting around for testing you can see it's perfectly opaque it, there's no transparency to this whatsoever if i need to thin it down for glazes it's still going to work out just fine It'll wet blend perfectly. It'll do a base coat perfectly. It'll do everything you need it to do. And it's not thick and gloppy like Citadel tends to be. So you don't need to worry about thinning your paints right out of the gate. It's perfect. It's the total package. So let's go ahead and do this step by step now. I can break it down. We put our agitator beads in there. Again, three for Nurgle. There's no real reason. It's just I'm weird. And then I set my funnel in there and set it aside. Now you saw me cut those gates. These are just, it's just a simplicity thing. Get this damn cap out of your way, right? So I cut these back. You're not going to need the pot. So I cut those. Pry off the lid. This is a brand new pot. There it is. Of course, here's our golden airbrush medium. Now this is where the technicals come in. See this little collar here? I go, I fill it with medium to about halfway up this collar. Not much more. Just for shits and giggles, I threw it on a scale just so you guys could see how much I'm putting in. Because I know there's going to be somebody in the comments that's going to go, exactly how much medium did you put in there? It's not a science here, guys. Just fill it to about halfway up this collar here, and you're good to go. Okay? Then drop your Badger mixer in there, turn it on, and kind of get that, that mixing motion going on. Make sure that you're scraping the sides. Make sure that you're scraping the bottom, you know, pushing the the mixer all around and then when you pull it out of the pot it's spinning right now I just put up a napkin just to kind of be safe with the centrifugal force so now I've got about that way up in the pot of course it's kind of like emulsified if you will um, 
going to dump it in here. As I dump it in, I like to pull the funnel up a little bit to let the air escape. And you'll see it kind of, it's going slow there, but as soon as I pick it up, it just cranks right through it. This one's actually moving quickly like the one prior that I wanted it to move, basically. So if you look in the pot, there's like almost no paint in there. There is still a little residual. I'm going to get that out. At the end, you'll be able to see through the bottom of the pot. But as you can see, it's about seven grams worth of whateverness left. But I zeroed it out to, again, illustrate it's not an exact science. I'm not putting enough medium in here for it to even register on this scale. There's barely any in there. Okay. It may be up to this first little lip on the pot. Get in there. Get aggressive. Mix it up. Stir it around. Do your thing. I'm going to speed it up here because we don't need to see what mixing looks like. And there you go. Dump it into the funnel. Let it do its thing. Now there's not much in there. You can actually see through the bottom of this, this pot. Not much in there. I mean, if you really want to sit there and waste your time digging all that out, be my guest. But you've already got more paint than you started with anyway. So what's the point in wasting your time? See? You can see right through the bottom there. Then, of course, I'm going to clean off the rim here because a little bit spilled over. Not much, but pop on the cap. It's important that it snaps. I like these because they actually snap in place and you're not going to squeeze the bottle one day and the nozzle goes shooting off. And then you put your cap on and you're good to go. Of course, we need to transfer the label. If you want to transfer the label, you can also write on it with a permanent marker of some sorts, but grab yourself an X-Acto blade. It doesn't matter where you cut it. It doesn't matter if you cut it. You can pull the whole label off if you want, but I'm OCD and it says 12 milliliters. It's no longer 12 milliliters, so I'm cutting that portion off. You don't, like I said, you don't have to put the label on the bottle, but it's a free label. Why not use it? It sticks just fine. So throw it on the bottle. You're good to go. That's it. It's so stupid easy. Now, again, I just want to show you guys the consistency of the paint. It's perfect. Watch when I drop the drops on the palette. It's actually still going to be mounded up. Like, it's not dissipating. And again, I'm going to show you guys the consistency of the paint here. The viscosity is still pretty damn true to regular old paint, like Reaper or Monument. Working it a little bit here on the palette. Get a little bit on the brush here. And then I'm going to paint this little a thigh panel on this marine here there's no transparency to this paint whatsoever caliban is a base paint it it remains a base paint frankly it's very very true to its nature i'll even paint the aquila on his chest there the little eagle thing as soon as i'm done smoothing it out because i'm ocd and there we go doesn't act like contrast paint it doesn't act like a wash it acts like paint because it's paint the purpose is not to use a shitload of medium to thin this paint down and that's one of the reasons why i don't like flow improver either flow improver will turn it into a wash so here you go here's the paints dried this is one coat each the orange and the green and that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this speeds up your process and makes life a little bit more easy for you guys using Citadel paints. In my opinion, Citadel paints are a great paint line. I frankly don't mind the pots myself, but because I'm an airbrusher, I like to decant my paints anyway. Just makes life so much easier. This takes the trouble out of decanting your paints and makes it extremely quick to do an entire paint line in an afternoon hanging out watching a few more impending duff youtube videos see what i did there at any rate thank you very much everybody for watching make sure to subscribe give me a thumbs up leave a comment down below if you have any questions and of course thank you to all my patrons here always after every video i thank my patrons i'd like to welcome you guys to come check me out tuesdays thursdays and saturdays on twitch and I will see you next time.